In this video, we'll be talking about the updates to Inspire by Ver STX version 2.8. We are so excited to share this version with you because we updated the look and user experience to every single page of the software. This version updated the background from what you see here, which is a blue gradient background with a white font. And the update, without further ado, is a white background with a charcoal black gray font and blue icons throughout. So as you can see here, we updated most of the icons and buttons and font sizes throughout the software. You'll notice that everything, well, most everything, uh, but we'll get to that, is right where you left it. So when you go to book an appointment, when you go to check somebody out, when you're looking for a report or um, your dashboard, most everything is right where you left it. There's about two or three things that we moved and we'll go over that in this video. But the good news is, is everything is right where you left it. It just got an enhancement to how it looks and occasionally how it works. So in this video, I'll be showcasing some of the bigger changes that we made to the new look as well as the new features. So let's go ahead and get started. Area I would like to take you to is the appointments because that is the most exciting, right? Okay. So in the appointments page, you can see this just got a major facelift. Everything's right where you left it though. So the workers' names are still across the top and the times are still on the left and the calendar is still in the upper right, or sorry, left. <laughs> and you can see here, like I said, everything's right where you left it. We just made things bigger and bolder and easier to read and a better user experience. So let me show you a few things that did change on this page or some new features that we added. Um, so the move weeks ahead got a two week option added. So that is exciting. You can now move two weeks out the, uh, worker week and weekday view. Let me take you there. Got the worker's name added to the top here, which was another request we got often. And, uh, we updated the find appointment. You can now add in any, um, so let me show you. So if I say, okay, in six weeks, I would like to book a blow dry with any worker and click search. This now allows me to add it to the waiting list. Whereas in the past, it only allowed me to add items to the waiting list that had a worker specified. Um, and you can see here, we have book, waiting list and cancel the selections here. So just to give you a little peace of mind and some examples of how we improved this page. So if I go in here and I search and select, so here is what the page looked like prior to this version. You had your date and your, um, your move weeks ahead and the visit type and selecting and search. So take a glance at this page and then this is how we improved it. So these buttons are now formatted over to the right and the layout's a little cleaner but everything is right where you left it. It's just a new and exciting look. So let me go ahead and add this to waiting list. So that's exciting. While we're here, I'll point out a few things that we changed on, on the waiting list. So prior to this version, the edit option was over here on the left-hand side. So we just moved this to be side-by-side -side with delete. So those are now right there. Um, and then now you can filter by any worker. So we added an any worker filter. And if you add somebody to the waiting list and it's not in find appointment, you can now choose, let me show you here, it will default to any worker. So that was, again, it's something that our end users really wanted to see. So we went ahead and made that update. Back to our beloved appointment book. So one of the changes in location we did make is previously on the software, uh, it went from uh, book standing to message board to book out time and then waiting list. So what we did is we just reordered these. So all the booking buttons are now on the top and then the message board and then the waiting list. So we just swapped book out time with message board. It's a really subtle change, but it overall improved the user experience and how that works. Okay, the other change we made is when you do booking a class, let me go in here. 
Ooh, we're going to book a very early class. And I click search. Now the search comes here at the top and then the book all, book available and cancel are down here. So then it displays the results. Prior to this version, how this worked is when I click booked class and I select the class and two of them and click search. The save, cancel, search and save were all on the same line and in a, a kind of a silly order. So we updated this and this is a great example of everything's right where you left it. We just gave it a new look. Okay, and we did the same with book out time, but in the interest of time, <laughs> we'll keep moving along. One of the other changes we made, and let me show you in here, is to uh, change an appointment. So if I click on this Jessica Mendez updo, and I wanna make modifications to this appointment, I click modify. So this got a big update. So let's go ahead and pull up a very similar screen here. So modify. So you can see here we had uh, where you selected the service group and the service and then the name. What a lot of people said is that likely the worker is not going to change, just the service. So now you can just change the service as needed. So you can make that change here. Um, and... It, we just reordered the, the selection, so now the worker doesn't change. And when you add to it, um, you can select whatever you need to select and add and remove. The other area we updated is the show durations. So it just looks a little cleaner. Uh, we removed those borders, you remember. And then the other change we made is the search. So prior to this version, let me show you how it worked is you could click search for appointment and it would show you a list of availabilities down here. And this was something that people wanted to search for any worker um, or they, they wanted to see the listing in a different formatting. So just for simplicity, what we did is we just took this feature and we said, you know what, let's just repurpose our find appointment. So if I click search for new time and date, I select the date that I want to book and I can leave the, the service as is. It will auto populate to the originally searched or selected services and workers. And then I can select, oh, okay, they want to come in at 10 and then go ahead and book. And now that appointment is booked. So those are some of the improvements to modifying an appointment to our changes in the checkout area of the software. So if I go to checkout, again, everything's right where I left it with the white background and now charcoal font. And one of the changes we made is in the other tab. So these used to be lines and they would say gift number. Um, so now they're just fields and they work just like any other field. And you can, of course, add that to the ticket. So that was really the biggest change we did into checkout. And everything is again, right where it used to be. <laughs> and uh, one of the other changes we made, so let me go ahead and add a tip here. And I'm going to add another tip for a different worker. Okay, so I'll come in here and apply my payment. And how this worked in the past is, so Maria got $2 and Shannon got $22. When this used to be listed on the receipt, it would just show tip 24. It didn't outline who got what tips. And that was something people really wanted to see broken down so that when they sent the receipt, that would uh, display to the client. So now those are itemized, whereas they were not in the past. The same will happen in your refunds as well as your refund uh, receipts. So uh, the other thing, and actually this will <laughs> this will come in handy, uh, when you issue a refund, so what used to happen is when you would 
process the refund, it would go to the checkout list. And now it will go to a ticket that lets you know that it's a refunded ticket. Uh, so it's got the, the negative amount and it's got the receipt. So you can send that receipt instantly to your client. And that is it for the checkout update. So now that we've reviewed the checkout updates, let's check out the changes to the client card. So let me pull up a client card here. And you can see here, again, same rules apply. Everything's right where you left it. There's just now a white background and a uh, black charcoal font. So down here, one of the biggest changes we made to the client card is that we just updated these to be fields. So it used to say first name <laughs> in the first name field and it was just a line. So we wanted this to be a little more consistent. Also on this page, you'll notice um, we did reorder the client card. So when you're tabbing along, just be aware of it. Um, we did move those things around and we moved these check boxes over to the right and um, everything else is pretty much the same. The responsible party used to be lookup and now it's a search. So same functionality, just changed the name of the button. We did the same here on the uh, client profile, but one of the bigger changes we made is the gender is now a dropdown with an option to select none. And in the past, those used to be bubbles. Same is true for the booking restrictions. So the booking restrictions used to be bubbles and now those are a dropdown. The booking restriction note used to be a pop-up where you had to click the note and now the note just displays right here. Um, we added a header here so that you knew these were online booking preferences and standing appointment details. So this stands true of we improved the user experience, but we kept everything right where it was for you. One of the new features that you'll notice on this page is the option to print a list of future appointments. So from here, if I want to print out a list of the future appointments, I can do that. And I just click that button. Okay, and then these other pages, they Again, they stayed the same, just got a little update here. And um, what we also did is the same is true for the client form. So the client form now has those fields and it's just simpler and sleeker and easy to read. And those are the updates for the client card. I would like to go over the changes that we made to the inventory area of the software and the um, reports. So in inventory, again, everything's right where it is, <laughs> just an updated look. And one of the changes that we made, this was a, uh, a, a request from a user of ours, is they wanted to say, okay, let's say I'm going to discontinue these nail polishes and I want to deactivate all of them. There is now a select all option that will remove the active checkbox on all these products so that you can just do a mass deactivation. And then of course you would just click save. And then everything else stayed the same uh, within inventory. Everything's right where you left it and it just got a new look and it's just a little sleeker and easier to use and read. We also uh, updated the look to the inventory usage page. So let me show you an example of that. So inventory usage in the past, if I hit, you know, a SKU and hit select and then it displayed down here. And so what we've done to this page is now when you do a search, you select, it's now over to the right. And then the colors to the buttons got a little update so that um, there's a difference between remove all items and cancel. So again, right where you left it and uh, easier to use. All right, now let's dive into reports. So reports all got the same treatment. Um, some reports got borders added to them. About 20 of our reports got a sort by added to it. And uh, the biggest change in reports is to process compensation. So if I go ahead and just select some start and end dates and hit generate and archive, uh, these buttons got color updates just like everywhere else throughout the software. But the biggest update here is that it shows tips left in drawer. So before it just used to show tips, tips paid out and tips left in drawer, and now it's just your tips left in drawer. Uh, because if you pay out the tips, you don't need to pay them within payroll or you, you're maybe not as concerned about it. 
Okay. So next up, what I want to show you is the changes that we made to the location of a few things, as well as some big changes we made to our setup areas. So uh, the biggest change we made as far as location is in marketing. So now when you click this marketing button over to here to the right or from the home page, it's going to take you right to marketing. It is no longer going to take you to a page to select your marketing selection. So in the past, what it did, let me just show you, if you clicked marketing over here on the right, it took you to set up promotions, set up rewards, marketing email, and marketing reports. So if you need to get into marketing, that's just going to take you straight to marketing. And then the setup rewards and setup promotions got moved. So let me show you where those are now. So if I go into setup and then I go to, well, let me show you from our wheel. So on our setup wheel, uh, there is now a new category called setup marketing. And when you click here, we have setup promotions and setup rewards. So those are now located right in here. The other change we made is this used to be setup memberships. So we took setup memberships and we moved it to setup service. So now when you click setup service, there is now the area to set up memberships right over here to the right. Okay, so while we are in the setup area, let's go ahead and talk about some of those big changes we made to setup. So one of the changes we made is if you go to setup, setup company, payment types, you can now remove a photo associated with a payment type. So that is a new feature. Similar to this feature, you can go to set up inventory, set up products, and click on the product, and you can remove a photo associated with the product as well. So those are both new and exciting features right within the software. The other thing we updated was the ability to require a visit type. So if I go into set up appointments and emails, there is now a new checkbox that is called visit type required. And what this will do is if this is required when I express book an appointment, find an appointment, book a standing appointment, and so on, it will require me to select a visit type. So that will be a mandatory uh, part of the selection. And that is where this new setting is. The other exciting thing is this page got a big old update. So let me show you how this looked before. I love this comparison. So here's a great example of how we improve the user experience. So this was the color key for what the different statuses of an appointment were and the booking interval, and then a handful of different preferences down here. So what we did is we took that booking key and we just made it a really simple, clean look over to the right. And then we noted those preferences and gave them some headers and just made them a lot cleaner. And now it's a one page view instead of uh, a scrolling view. And that's all right here to you. So the functionality didn't change. It just really cleaned up how this page looks. Similar to that trend, we also did the same to notifications and reminders. So again, all the same fields, all the same checkboxes, all the same capabilities. But what you can see we've done is this was the previous reminders page. And you'll see now it says send appointment reminders this many days ahead uh, before the appointment at a specific time. If you select hours, it's not going to ask you a time. And the text message box is bigger. Uh, the email template is right here. And you can see we just cleaned all that up and made it where you have to scroll less and easier to read and use. We didn't make any updates to the online booking, uh, but what we did do is in the previous versions of this software, this was called Gifts Online, and these were the only options on this page. So what we've updated here, it is now called Gift Template because it's not just your Gifts Online. You can actually print your gift templates. So when you sell a gift certificate, there is an option to print it. And what we've done is we made this way bigger so that you can read it and be able to work with it. And then one of the new features we added is where you can send yourself a test email of your gift template. So great example of how we just took something right where it was and we just improved it and made it better for you and the overall experience. So some other changes to set up is let me see here. 
there, is, there are two new permissions in this version. So let me take you there. So if we go to set up workers and set up permissions, there is now a permission. It's located under appointments on whether or not a worker can check someone in. So there is now a check in permission. So if they have this unchecked, if it's not enabled, they will not be able to check in an appointment. In addition to the check in permission, we added an appointment checkout permission. It's up top here. It's also under the appointments page category. And if this is disabled, then they will, that uh, worker will not see the appointment checkout button on the ticket detail or the appointment list. So that is also a new feature. Okay, next up is worker details. And we just made some changes to the hours area. So this is all the same, similar locations, but we did tweak some stuff around. So let me show you. So the copy hours from um, to copy hours from another worker. If you look at the uh, previous version of the software, the copy hours from was crammed right in here. So we just moved it to the upper right hand corner. So it's there. And then the other piece is to select that the hours are the same for uh, work and scheduled hours and online availability. We move that checkbox down below. So it's down here. So this is just a little easier to read, easier on the eyes, which is very consistent with all of the updates that we have done. Then one more thing I want to show you before we, our video comes to a close is that we have updated uh, the initial sign-on to the software to include our terms and conditions. So the biggest change here is these terms and conditions were on your invoice when you initially signed up for the software. Uh, to improve our user experience, we added this just to be consistent with all the other softwares out there. We took our terms and conditions and we made them a part of the first time you sign on. So um, this will pop up the first time you sign on to this version. And um, once you agree to it, it'll let you in the software and it's the same uh, as it was on the invoice. And um, once you do it the one time, it won't reappear unless, of course, we change our terms and conditions. But I don't feel like that's going to happen anytime soon. So that is the end of our video. I hope you like this version. I hope you love the changes that we made. We are so excited for all of this. If you have any questions or comments or feedback or ideas for more new features, we would love to hear them. Just give us a call here at STX 1-800-766-4778 or of course, email support at stxsoftware.com. Thank you so much and have a, a fabulous, fabulous day.